guys, welcome back on uh, Marionetten. Uh, it's quite a long time ago, so I thought uh, to make a new vlog uh, to tell you a, bi a bit about what's happening uh, on the boat and what our projects are, what our plans are. But first of all, uh, I think uh, we just go uh, start the engine and go on the water because it's very hot in the harbor here. It's uh, something like uh, 35 degrees or something, so uh, way too hot uh, to do any projects at the moment. Uh, so let's move out. I will take you with uh, with me, and then uh, we see it from then. Yeah. Okay. Let's go in time lapse mode. Okay, so we are out on the water. Uh, I showed you, I think, in the time lapse uh, that we went out of the harbor, and now we are going to the Haring Fleet. It's cold, so very nice day. Uh, it's quite hot. There's barely any wind, so uh, we won't be sailing. And also, I'm single-handed uh, today, so uh, that's not a good idea, I think. So just, uh, yeah, let's uh, find a nice uh, spot uh, to anchor, maybe, and then. Uh, I'll tell you more about uh, Marinette. Yeah, okay, let's go. Okay, so we are anchored just outside the harbor. The harbor is just over there. It's holding great. We need to upgrade this because this is uh, a little bit chained with a lot of line. It's not the right line even, but here we have only uh, very thick mud on the bottom, so it's holding great. So this should be fine for now, only when we go cruising. Then uh, we need something different with uh, a lot of chain. So this is uh, how it looks, right? Very, very nice day. Only it would be great if there was more wind because then we could sail and it would be a little bit cooler. Okay, so we are anchored and uh, I thought uh, let's sit down now and talk uh, a little bit about uh, this boat, the ship and what's happening with the project because uh, well, there has happened a lot. Uh, I made some previous videos but they were not from really good quality and, and now I upgraded my uh, equipment. Uh, so we have a gimbal thing now and stuff like that so I hope to make more content for you guys and also to uh, yeah, show you more about the project, that what is going on and stuff like that. So, um, well, to catch up a little bit, um, I think we bought Marionette now two years ago, uh, when she was in really bad shape. I will include a picture somewhere over there uh, of how we bought it. Um, and basically, well, she was ready for the scrapyard. That was basically it. The, and the core and the deck was gone, was completely rotten. Uh, had many, many, many soft spots. The interior was rotten. And, uh, well, it was uh, just really bad. So, um, I saw her and she was for sale for like 10,000 euros. And I said, okay, uh, I want to take a look at it. I was in the neighborhood anyway with our previous boat. Um, so we went over to Den Helder, where she was for sale, and I saw her in complete, complete yellow paint, and it was looking really ugly. Uh, and uh, well, 
I thought to myself, well, this is a project that's really cool to do, but no way for 10,000 grand because that is just insane, a lot of money. So, uh, yeah, I uh, talked to the owner and I said, okay, well, listen, I want to do this project. I'm really uh, confident that I can make it happen. And I, I'm also really excited, but there's no way that I go going to pay 10,000 euros for that. Uh, so what is the best deal that you can do? And I had a little bit of luck because the harbor master had said uh, to them that, uh, well, he had to sail, sell the boat or otherwise uh, they would move the boat to the scrapyard. And well, that would be a pity. So uh, he said to me, uh, okay, give me some symbolic uh, uh, figure. So I said, okay, I will pay 500 euros just to take it away and I will see what I uh, can do. If it's not savable, then well, I lost 500 euros and no big deal. And otherwise I uh, have a nice project. So that's basically what we did. So he, I, I paid him 500 euros, but you need to see it was in the water in Den Helder which is uh, about a three hour drive from where I live. Uh, the engine didn't work, nothing worked. Um, basically, she was only afloat and that was it. So I had to see what, uh, how I could manage to get her home basically, because there was no way that I could work on a project like three hours drive away. Um, so uh, I contracted uh, somebody to work on the engine uh, and well, that was one very fortunate thing. We had very, very much luck because the engine didn't run for 20 years, uh, but it started right, right up. So we changed, of course, some filters, uh, some belts and stuff like that. Uh, we had to install a new starter engine, but then it fired right up. So that was great and it's running great still. So uh, then we had, at least we had some way to get her home. So and then, uh, I asked the owner, are there any seals uh, for the boat? And actually there were 20 seals. Uh, a couple of them were in bad shape, but most of them were like brand new, almost brand new. Uh, and the seals were the original, original one. I will include a picture of, uh, it was in, case, in this case Moon Chaser. So this boat was then called Moon Chaser. Uh, it was in 98 or something like that uh, and there you see the sail and then I include also a picture of uh, us sailing this boat with the same sail. So we had a lot of luck with that also because the sails of course will cost uh, a fort fortune to, to buy for this boat because always custom, nothing is standard. Uh, I Somebody told me that a new sail for this boat will cost you about 10,000 euros, which uh, that's just money that I don't have. Uh, so yeah, uh, we had a lot of luck also with that. So we bought, uh, brought the boat uh, back to Hollywood Sluis, uh, which was a great sail. Everything went fine. I will include a little bit of uh, a video that I made of that day. We need I had to be, uh, go across the North Sea for that. Um, so from Den Helder to Helvoet Sluis, it's a full day of sailing, uh, which was great. We had amazing weather. Uh, and well, of course, it was a little bit uh, scary also because we didn't know the boat at all. It was kind of a risk, uh, but we chose a very uh, stable day with not a lot of wind uh, or stuff going on. And we had also, had also a life raft uh, with us uh, to be certain that everything uh, was safe for us. Uh, so we uh, gambled and uh, took, the, took really the gamble of course and everything uh, went out fine. The engine re did run great. We had a nice sail also. And then we came to Hollywood Sluis. And there I put her uh, on the yard inside, uh, inside yeah, some kind of uh, working area. And there she was for a half, half a year. So, um, the plan was to be for longer there, but as everybody knows, uh, COVID hit. And I have a company uh, which is in the entertainment business. I supply all kinds of technical equipment and designs for stages, 
so like for light audio uh, and stuff like that uh, so we were out of business completely so we had nothing left uh, and that for about two years we had of course some live stream work but that was it basically so no way that i could afford this project anymore so uh, the other side of it was that uh, well i had a lot of time of course because there was just no work anymore so i put a lot of effort and time in her uh, to take her basically to a point that she could float uh, again so i had to replace the, uh, uh, well, part of the deck uh, not all of it is replaced still so we have some core work uh, to do but the, the most uh, well uh, prioritized things so uh, the, the front of the deck was for example you couldn't walk in it so on it uh, so that had to be replaced otherwise uh, it was just not safe for us so I have some soft spots still on deck but that's all really small uh, parts so that is something for later uh, that I will fix so I fixed that uh, we fixed the engine and uh, we did a lot of uh, painting work and uh, below the waterline you, you can imagine after 20 years how that looked like so uh, it had to be stripped and uh, built up again with uh, some um, filling uh, and a lot of sanding and then epoxy primer and then of course the bottom paint itself so we had quite a lot a uh, lot of work i had great help from my family and friends so that was great but then the money was well all spent i didn't have any budget anymore just because I had uh, to pay for this project, which cost a lot, but also, of course, uh, just to uh, uh, live. So I had to stop the, the project basically uh, and just splash her. Uh, so that is what we did. Um, yeah, and then some drama happened, uh, basically. Uh, we had the first uh, sale that was really nice. At a nice sun tower on the beach, and then we uh, did go back to the harbor. And the next day, when I came in, the complete boat was full of hydraulic oil. And yeah, well, you can imagine that that is not a good thing. <laughs> and basically, what happened? We have a, a diesel engine, and we have a hydraulic system that drives the prop, basically, so a hydro motor. Um, the engine runs a pump uh, and that uh, pumps fuel to the or hydro or basically to the hydro motor and that turns our prop well that part the hydro motor was broken so uh, all the ore that uh, we had in it it was completely thrown out and well the thing was uh, that well, it had to be replaced or rebuilt at least. So we contacted the yard and asked them to uh, well, rebuild the hydro motor. Well, they did that about three or four times, I think. And then, uh, well, it was again and again, like the bearings were broken. Then we had again oil on the boat. And then the other part broke of the, of the thing. So the conclusion was there was no way to save that hydro motor. Uh, luckily, the yard was really, really nice for us and they helped us well, amazingly. So check them out, Jagra Yacht Service in uh, Helvetsluis. Amazing job uh, on that. Uh, so they gave us uh, well, uh, basically a new hydro motor, which is in now. It's very great. I will show you in a bit uh, when we go inside. Uh, but well, that, was, that is one thing what is fixed. In that year, uh, in the time frame of a year when we splashed her and then uh, till now, um, we went also one time uh, on a nice trip on the North Sea. And uh, well, we went to uh, Teschelling, it's called. So that's about 24 hours sail from here. And on the way back to home, we had some bad weather and we broke our four stay so that was the next drama and basically uh, the problem is the rig is really old uh, I will show you in a bit uh, now we can walk through it now if even so let's go to the rigging 
So over here you can see our rigging. So it's running inside and there it's attached to uh, the structure of the boat, which is really strong. So with this rigging, all those parts, that's all original. And the thing that broke for us was the forestay, front of the stay. And actually this turnbuckle broke. Well, not this one, but the original one broke, which was from uh, bronze, I think. Um, this is normally really durable, but in this case it broke completely. So we had uh, to replace it. You can see still some painting work that I have to do because what happened was when the, this thing broke, this part came completely lost, of course. But you can imagine when that happens, it's uh, not a good thing as we were sailing. So, uh, yeah, okay, that broke. Uh, the sail was going way out of there. Uh, so I ordered the guy who, who was steering the boat to put the wind behind us so the thing was running away from the boat instead of uh, going uh, at our heads but uh, because of all the lines uh, the pulpit was ripped out of the boat basically so I did a repair over there you can see it's uh, still the bare fiberglass so I need to uh, well paint it uh, uh, well send it and then paint it but that's what happened and we got a line stuck in the prop and that was really a good lesson for me so always watch out in those uh, cases that you don't have your uh, engine in gear because that's really dangerous and that is basically what happened uh, in this case so we had to call the coast guard because there was no way that uh, we could get the line out in the sea state that we had and we will include also some pictures over here so, uh, yeah, that is uh, what happened basically in that year. So let's put it down. So you can imagine uh, all that drama that didn't help really the project. And especially in the interior, we couldn't do anything because of all the work that Yachra, Yacht Service was doing for us. Um, so we had the engine always open and stuff like that so we couldn't work on the interior basically there was no chance and it was uh, uh, hopeless so uh, yeah we didn't do that so there's a lot of interior work left to do so um, I think let's go inside and then uh, I will show you what uh, the current state is inside uh, bear in mind please it's all what, what is inside at the moment is uh, a part original which is nice and the part is a temporary uh, like so like the galley and the engine box uh, with our table on it is all temporarily uh, until we have enough money again to uh, basically finish it or replace it with some nice wood and stuff like that um, the goal is to well, keep your as original as possible uh, so we will try to rebuild uh, everything like it was originally so let's go inside and now I'll show you uh, everything so this is the way that we walk in so we have a bench over here at the moment there is our uh, oh, what is it? Fridge. Um, so this is original. Did of course not. And then when we look behind that, this is also original. All that would work. So we have a nice bunk, which is also for sleeping normally. There we have some kind of stretcher where you can sleep on. Behind there, there is crew places to uh, to sleep our engine and here you can see the system so this thing is new this is a parker uh, hydro drive which drives our prop the engine is a volvo penta and the 21b i think and uh, yeah it's running great it's still in good shape which is uh, really really good um, and it's well, it's turn, turned around so basically the front of the engine is now facing the, to the back of the boat. That's why we have this. And I think it's all, of course, for balance and uh, weight distribution. 
So they had to replace this, uh, those hoses, uh, hydro hoses, and the uh, this part, the hydro motor. So this is temporarily uh, just uh, so we can uh, have a nice dinner. There's a lot of space, and normally there was the chart table. The chart table itself was in pretty good shape, so we have that still in the storage. So we will place it back uh, and make it. Uh, well, so that we can use that again. Then we have over there, we have the galley. Which is uh, a temporary galley, uh, just so we well, can cook and stuff like that. It's not looking really nice, but it's working, everything works. So that's uh, basically uh, what is important for us at the moment. And there I made some temporary bunks, so that we can uh, sleep at least. There is a little bit of seal storage and storage of other things. And here we have a lot of storage. So this opens basically. And then, uh, yeah, there is a lot of storage there. There we have for our son the sleeping place, some lines. Hi guys. <laughs> and there we have our uh, bathroom. Everything functions, so we have a little bit of a shower and there's things uh, so that everything, uh, so we can at least have a shower and stuff like that, everything works. So that's basically it, uh, yeah, for the interior. So it's uh, it's just an open space, we don't have any doors at this boat, uh, which is, uh, well, kind of unusual uh, for some people maybe, but it looks for a racer, it looks really great, I think. And we just need to uh, finish uh, the interior with some parts, but the, most of the interior was uh, in great shape, just like this. This needs only a little bit of varnish and then it will be all good again. So here you can see what the structure is for the rigging basically. So this is the rig, it comes out of the deck and then it attaches to a uh, kind of a superstructure I think or I don't know how it's called it. It's really really strong. So uh, it attaches to this and that is all attached again to our keel which runs over here so this is the well the where do you call that i don't i don't think i'm sure but it's an aluminum uh, uh yeah i don't know i will uh, put it there how it's called i'm not sure uh so but everything stands basically on that structure and also here above you can see this is all part of the construction which saved the boat i think basically because this is really 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 strong and that runs also way back over there so everything is kind of connected and that's just really the nice thing of this boat because uh the hull is basically just the outside uh, this is just a skin to keep water out but the structure is really coming from that uh, space frame it's called that's how it's called space frame so really, really strong construction. Okay, so so that is the boat. Uh, now about our goals, what we want to do with her, what we do uh, want to accomplish, basically. And well, first of all, the goal is to race her. That's clear. She is a racing ship, and I think uh, I want to race her again, but then as a classic yacht. Uh, so. She is quite fast still. Uh, most of the boats are well, basically chanceless upwind. Downwind is all the case because we are not really uh, not really fast downwind, but upwind we are really really fast. And the funny thing is, I have contact with a lot of old crew members, and one of them, Peter Wright, uh, who was sailing on uh, Moon Chaser in that time, he said, uh, "Marinette or Moon Chaser in that time," uh, he described. Moon Chaser was an upwind animal and a downwind dog. <laughs> and 
which I think means upwind she was amazingly fast, which I also experienced, uh, but downwind she is really, really sh slow. Um, and therefore, yeah, we can go, uh, uh, well, we won't win uh, of, the, of the newer designs, especially not downwind. But upwind we make a lot of chance because we are really really fast and we can aim really high. That's a nice thing of this boat. So um, also about that, I have contact, like I said, uh, with some uh, of the uh, former crew, and uh, well, it would be cool I think to organize a reunion uh, in KWS um, and visit, well let the old crew members visit Marionette again. And they said they would really like that, I think. So, um, yeah, that will be really cool uh, if we can accomplish that. But before we cross the North Sea to KWS, we have a lot of work left to do. And well, I made a list of that, which is over here. Wait a second, I will change the direction of the camera. Okay, so we have a list over here, uh, like most of the YouTube channels are doing. Uh, we have to do, doing and done. Well, basically, they have a lot of tasks to do. Uh, I didn't scribe it all down because it's uh, really a lot, but I just made some like titles. So replacing the rigging, that's uh, something that we really need to do. It's costing a lot of money, but before we go sailing, uh, it really needs to be replaced. Um, then building slash finishing the interior. Well, I showed you already what we need to do. Install autopilot. That's kind of a nice to have, but also for cruising it's uh, rather important. So I think uh, before we go on any long stretch of uh, uh, well passage, then we uh, we need to do this. Upgrade electrical installation. Uh, well, that's also for our fridge. For example, we need a real fridge, not that this one. Uh, we need uh, an out, real, well, the autopilot then, of course. Uh, but we need also some kind of transformer to go from 12 volts to 22 volts and stuff like that. So that's uh, things that we need to do. Check cue bolts. So I can show you that. Like I said earlier, this is the space frame, which, um, well, the mast stands on it, but also. Uh, the uh, keel hangs on it, so if I remove this, you can actually see the keel bolts. And the problem is, this is alum uh, aluminium and that is stainless steel bolts, so there could be some corrosion going on. And I want to make sure that it's still strong enough and well, there won't be any problems. Some guys say it will be good because it's all really thick and overbuilt, but I want to check that. Then we have replaced steering cables. Well, that's basically the same thing as the rigging. Basically, it's, well, it's uh, stainless steel wire and that just needs to be replaced. Replace prop shaft. Yeah, that's a really unfortunate thing. Uh, it is bent, it's really wobbly. Uh, so uh, it needs to be replaced. Cleaning crew blocks uh, or replacing. Uh, well, I showed you in the back, so we have some kind of stretchers, and we'll walk towards it, and you can see it. So there is normally a mattress on this, there's a leak cloth, and then that are the bunks uh, for the crew. So, and there's then also one above this, so it's a twin, basically, well, double, double bed. And that's on the other side, the same thing. So we need to replace that because we will need some crew for the passage. And then at least, at last, replace the mast seal. Uh, well, as you can see, the mast is going in here. I just, for now, I put some seeker flex in, which kind of works, but uh, it's uh, kind of leaky, uh, leaky still. So uh, this needs to be replaced. So that is all the things that we have to do before we cross the North Sea to KWS. So basically that is all that we have to do um, to get her safe. And um, well, like I said, I really want to go to KWS, but I'm not sure in which time frame we can make that happen. 
Um, so that's basically why we are asking for help uh, because we can't do this project anymore alone. Um, and we have uh, already a helper, which is great. We have uh, Sales Rigging helping us. Sales Rigging is uh, a partner. We are the ambassador for them. And they are, or, well, they already replaced uh, all the running rigging for us and they serviced our winches, which is really great. Amazing guys, thank you so much. Um, and they will also help with replacing the standing rigging, but we have uh, still a big gap in the uh, budget for that because they are helping us, but they won't uh, give it to us, which I understand because it's uh, quite of a lot of money. Um, so we need to raise about 6,000 euros uh, which I don't have anymore uh, and I'm hoping that people can help us basically with that so we started a, a, a funding for that, a crowdfunding uh, and hopefully some people loving the IOR area era and stuff, uh, well boats like the IOR um, want to give us a little hand with it uh, to replace it and that's basically why we have a GoFundMe which you can find below um, it will all go straight to the running, uh, to the wicking, and uh, it helps really a lot to save this project and keep this project going on. So yeah, that's it uh, guys. Uh, if you like this episode, please uh, consider subscribing. It helps a lot. Uh, and uh, if not, uh, it's also fine, just uh, watch it. I will try to post more regularly uh, some videos and also there's some DIY we're coming up when it's not this hot as it is today because uh, I'm going for a swim now because it's really hot. So thanks again and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.